Hello, I hope you're having a great day. So, I have a few fungus snacks. Ooh, I was hoping not to have them this year. But they don't seem too out of control yet, and so I thought, well, I'm gonna try what some other people are trying, and I'm gonna try these mosquito bits to get rid of the fungus snacks. Maybe conquer them before they get out of control. I'm gonna be starting a lot of Snapdragons next week, and I really don't want all of these fungus snacks running around. So if I read the back of this, it says to mix four tablespoons per gallon of water. So each one of my green jugs is two gallons. So I'm gonna need eight tablespoons, which is half of a cup. So I'm gonna add a half a cup of the mosquito bits to my two gallons of water. And then I have to let them sit for 30 minutes and then you skim the extra ones off the top. And actually, I'm gonna put them in those yellow bags that I used on my anemones yesterday. So I'm gonna put a half a cup of these in those yellow bags, and then I'm gonna put them in my green containers, and then I'm gonna pour it on top of all of these and hope that it kills the gnats. Stupid gnats. So I've got this bag down in here, and in 30 minutes, I should be able to pull that bag out, and that water should be equipped with mosquito bits. So hopefully I can just thwart the problem before it ever even comes into existence. I mean, most of my trays are looking pretty good. I don't see a lot of gnats running around on them, but every once in a while I'll see some scurrying around, and I'm like, I've got to get those gnats. Like, they are horrendous if you get an infestation. I had one last year and I never got rid of them. And I did still have a lot of plants, but it did eat the roots of a lot of them and killed off some. And then I think it just stunted their growth. So I really want to get it taken care of this year before it gets into a bad problem. So 30 minutes, we're going to kind of drizzle that over the top of the soil on all of my lisianthus and hopefully no more larvae will pop and I can try to catch the rest of them with these little yellow sticky gnats and maybe I can get this problem under control. So I thought while I was running the pups, I'd check on my anemones, and I think it's looking pretty good in here. It doesn't look, I don't think like anything dug into them. And it looks like the temperature, let's see, can I get it on there? It's about 45, so maybe in a couple of days it'll warm up. So it's really cold out right now in Iowa. It's like 15 degrees. We're on a shortened dog walk today. Um, so that actually makes me feel good because if it's already 45 in here um, next week, the temperatures outside are supposed to be about 45 or 50. So I 
have no doubt that it will start warming up to be about 50 degrees in here. I might have to leave these out here a little bit longer than the two weeks, but that's okay. It'll give me some time to figure out where I'm gonna plant them. Okay, so it has been about 30 minutes. So we're gonna pull these out and I'm just gonna put them in. They kind of got lighter. <laughs> Set them in there. And now I've got to figure out a way to make this not pour out so fast. What do you think? I think this is going to work. <laughs> I say that tape fixes everything. Oh. All right, so I'm just going to pull one of the trays over. This thing gushes out otherwise. The main thing that you want to take care of is if the fungus gnats lay eggs and then the larva comes out, it's, it is what starts eating the plant roots. So if I treat all of my lithianthus right now, any larva that's in that soil should die. And hopefully, or even the eggs I think might die. And then even if the gnats appear, if I keep up on it, maybe eventually I'll be able to get all of my trays done. <laughs> I hope so. But I am going to mix up two more gallons of water just to finish off what's in this room. I have some potted plants. I have that and maybe I'll just take like a mister bottle and put some of it in it and try to spray the tops of those seeds and maybe just maybe it'll be just enough. There are covers on those so I'm hoping maybe the soil nuts didn't get in there but they could have and I didn't see a lot of gnats while I was doing it so I think I've been keeping on top of it a lot better than last year so hopefully it's not as big a problem this year. That's what I'm doing today trying to prevent an infestation of fungus gnats. Life is a flower farmer. Duct tape is just a wonderful thing. <laughs> now I can make a smaller funnel on my watering jugs with it. That actually, like at first, probably the video I did and showed you guys where it was coming out came out a little bit fast. But honestly, after that jug got down about three fourths of the way, that water was coming out just like a turkey baster or something would. It was just a fine line and I was able just to go along the tops of it all. So nice score. Now I know what to do if I need a smaller funnel on any of my watering jugs. I am from Iowa, so maybe it's a little hickish, but it worked. And then I had duct tape. One thing that happened when I was doing my mosquito bits is I realized that some of my sticky tapes were getting full and I don't have any more of those cute ones. So I had gotten these because they're a much better deal. You get 20 huge sheets like this and it's just, it's a lot cheaper than those small ones. Even though those small ones are really cute and I use them because I love them. But I'm gonna try to cut these in a way that I can use them just like the small ones. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get six out of one sheet. I don't have to be 
perfect. And what I did last year is I just put my plant tags. So you write the name of the plants on these. They're really cheap. But you can put them on these and then when these fill up and you cut new ones, you can just pull the plant tag off and stick it on the new one. So, just like this. I put it so it goes pretty far down into the container. Um, just like that. And then I can stick it in my seed trays. show you that. I've got a couple of them now. Okay, so now if I want to just stick this in, I can either stick it in the dirt or I can stick it in. The nice thing about those is they actually fit in the dirt better. So then I can put them in the seedling tray. And, and I could put the yellow thing down so it's closer to the soil. Um, and maybe I'll do that on some others. This one is really high. <laughs> And then I got a little bit closer, so maybe the next one's perfect. But like these, they don't really fit in the soil itself very well um, because they're so wide. So that is an alternative and it actually is the cheaper method of using the yellow stickies. Another nice thing about these, in my opinion, is that they just go a long way and you can really make them any size that you want to make them and you can put them you know you can make a bunch of little ones and put all over the trail tray if you had like a really bad infestation you can put them so that they're way down low inside the tray um and if you're real crafty you could cut your own shapes you could work you know if you have kids and you want to work with your kids and make shapes out of them and make it into a fun project you can do that at two. And really, I mean, that's one sheet. And I just filled all of those. And this packet comes, I think, it comes with 20 sheets. And I did get those last year, so I haven't looked up the prices this year. But honestly, I remember thinking, wow, I can get 20 huge sheets for around the same price as like 10 of those that are like butterflies and stars. And I think those are super cute and I love them. But I love these sheets because like if you're having people over or you want to do a video and show off your plants, you can replace these a lot easier because you can just take a sheet, cut it, make a bunch of them, take off the old ones and re-stick them in. And I do like how if you use your plant tags, you can stick them into any of the pockets in the cell tray that you want, where the other ones I found kind of stuck out too far. So if you want an easy way and a more affordable way to make those little yellow sticky traps, that's what I've come up with. But you will see me using the others too because sometimes it's just easier to grab one of those. So another thing that you can do with these is you can just peel one side off and keep one side sticky and you can just lay them in a plant especially if you bottom water i don't think it would work that good if you top water but if you bottom water um, you can just throw little ones in a plant and you can catch a bunch of them that way too but anyway i hope you found this video informative and i hope you're having a great day